five simple text animation techniques that you can learn right now in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. Let me show you how to make them. Once you're in DaVinci Resolve, make sure you're on the edit page. Now go to the project settings and by default, DaVinci will create a project of 1920 by 1080 resolution and 24 frames per second. For this tutorial, these are enough. Now go to file, new timeline, and I'm going to use the project settings, which are the 1080p and 24 frames per second. So I'm just going to give it a name and click create. Now we can begin to add our text and animate it. Close the media pool tab and open the effects tab. And from the toolbox and titles, we're going to grab the basic text title and drag it into the timeline. Let's close the effects tab to make more room and let's zoom in. By default, the basic text title has five seconds in length, which is more than enough for what we need. In the inspector, we have the settings for the entire layer and the title which contains settings for the text. So instead of basic title, I'm going to type in 5 and increase its size to 300. Now the first technique will be to animate this size. So we're going to go to settings and the property we need to use is zoom. So with the playhead set at frame 0, we're going to click and type in 0. And both axes will be set to 0 because they're linked. And now we're going to click on this diamond icon, which will set a keyframe at frame 0 for us. Now let's go forward to frame 15 and click again and type 1. So now if we move the playhead back to the beginning and press play we can see our animation. Now click on the keyframe icon to open the keyframe menu and let's move the playhead out of the way. Click on the first keyframe and let's use the ease in option. Click on the handle and drag it up and then click on the second keyframe and use the ease out option this time. And if we play it back, it's a lot smoother, but I'm going to adjust it by clicking and dragging the keyframe to adjust the curve here. So let's see now. Good. And this was the first technique, animating the size. Now for the second one, we're going to animate the position. So we're going to set a keyframe at frame 21 and using the arrow keys on the keyboard, we're going to move forward. So frame 22, 23, 24, 25. And as you can see here, we don't have a chain link between the two. So these are independent of each other. I'll undo and move only the X axis to the left. And again, move the playhead out of the way and let's adjust it a little bit somewhere around here. And again, I'm going to use the ease out option, click on the handle and drag it down, click on the first keyframe and use the ease in and drag it up a little bit. So let's see now. Okay, let's move the second keyframe further to smooth out the curve. Good, but I'm going to add a slight change to the size to make it more interesting. So click on the drop down menu next to the position and disable position X and Y and just leave the zoom active. Click on it and until frame 25 we're going to scale down the size to 0.7 and use an ease out option. Now let's rewind and watch it again. Good. Now for the third technique we're going to close off this menu and open the effects tab again. And this time we're going to grab the text plus title because the next technique is going to be the write on animation. And fortunately text plus has it already built in. We're going to give it the simple word, go this time to layout. And as you can see text plus has more options than the basic text. And this time we're going to go to center and move it to the left and a bit up. So we want from this point to start the write on animation. Let's go back to text, grab the end point, Drag it all the way to zero, set the keyframe, let's move forward a little bit and drag it all the way back to one. Now let's see the effect. And that's the third technique. Simple, easy and fast. Now let's move on to the fourth technique, the text reveal. For this one, we're going to have to move to fusion. So click and drag over both titles, right click and create a compound clip. This will collapse all clips into one, making it easier to work with. Let's give it a name, 
Let's place the playhead at the beginning and now let's move to Fusion. In Fusion you have your media out where you can see what's happening with your animation. You have your timeline, which in this case is represented by frames, and you can even see the frame number over here. You have the nodes in the node area, your toolbar, and if you press Ctrl or Command if you're on a Mac, plus the spacebar. The Select Tool menu appears, where you can search for other tools that are not present on the toolbar. So let's click and drag over both nodes and move them so you can see them better. And just move the media out a little bit further. And open up the inspector, because we're gonna need it. So our first animation starts from zero, and ends at frame 32. And from frame 32, the second animation starts and ends at frame 38. And now from frame 38, our text reveal will take place. So let's grab a text node. By the way, this is a text plus element, just so you know. And as you can see, each node has an in point and an out point. And in order to connect the nodes, it's simple. You take the out point from one node and connect it to the in point of the other node. So in our case, I'm going to take the out point from our text node and connect it to the out point of the media in one. By doing this, I automatically create a merge node. So I don't need to take it from the toolbar or search for it. And the merge node does exactly what its name says. Merges multiple nodes into one and then you can finally connect it to the media out to have a complete animation. Let me move the text node to have a more organized layout and type in our text word and go to layout and move it to be exactly where we want it. Let's go back to text, and by using the tracking option, we're going to extend the word. And you can also move the text by using the red arrows, so we're going to try to match the lines here. Now with the text node selected, we're going to click on the rectangle in order to create a mask. And as you can see the green box, our rectangle is set, so let's try to move it and place it somewhat at the center of our text node. And using the width and height, resize it to fit our text node. Now, in order for the reveal to happen, we just have to move the rectangle node. So since our previous animation ends at frame 38, let's move to frame 42, or let's say 44, for a smoother motion. Click on the keyframe icon for center, move back to frame 38. Let's just use the arrow, hold the vertical one, and move it upwards. Now click on the media out to have a cleaner view, and let's move the playhead at the beginning and press play. Now for the final technique, let's combine the reveal animation with a blur effect. So let's grab the background, again, out point to out point, create a merge, click on the background, change the color to a more toned down aqua tone, and again, click on the rectangle. And now as you can see, we have our background masked into this smaller rectangle. So let's move it somewhere around here so we can see the rest of the text. Again, use the height and width. Let's go and place it somewhere around here and try to match with the rest of the layout. Good, now let's grab the text and repeat the process. And our final word was animations. Let's place the text somewhere in the center. Okay, now that we have the text, let's change the color to black. And now let's readjust the background even better, especially since we're gonna animate it later. So we're at frame 44 and we want the background to come from left to right and reveal the text. So first we're going to animate the background. Let's go to frame 50 and have a keyframe for width and for center set. Let's go back to frame 44, decrease width to zero and on the x-axis move the center to the left, somewhat around here. So let's play this from the beginning. Having the text still visible helps us with the framing. So now let's press play. Good, our reveal ends at frame 50, so next up it's the text again. Same as we did before, but let's go to frame 52 this time. Click on the text, add a rectangle, place a rectangle, and this time I'm not gonna resize it, I'm just gonna keyframe the center and width, go to frame 46, and set the width to 0 and change the center on the x-axis. Let's play that back. Good. Now let's add the blur effect. Go back to frame 52, click on the text layer, right click the text box, and select the follower modifier. Modifiers are an extra set of settings to use, which I'll cover in another video. So for the blur effect, I want my softness to be at zero on both axes. Go back to frame 46 and increase them. Let's see. 
Good, but I don't want the effect to happen all at once, so go back to timing and on the delay enter 0.2. And order from automatic, change it to random but one by one. And as you can already see, some of them are still blurry, some of them are not. Let's play it back. Good. Let's go back to the edit page and see how it looks there also. Now these are just a few techniques that you can learn to create simple or complex text animations. Or even better, combine them with images and create animations like you've seen throughout this video. Now before I go, I want you to leave a comment and tell me what else do you want to learn about DaVinci Resolve. And I'll make sure to cover it in the next video. But until then, here's a cool video that I think you'll enjoy a lot. Until next time, take care.